and welcome back to another episode of Cooking for the Um of It. Today I am going to be making Epinade au jus, which is a fancy French way of saying spinach braised in a beef stock. This can also be done with uh, cream, in which case it would be uh, Epinade à la crème, but uh, this today I am not going to be using the cream, I'm going to be using the stock. So, Epinade au jus. Let's get started. Now, as well as spinach, I am going to be making something to go with it. And I thought something good to go with my spinach would be one of my paleo pork chops. I originally did this recipe back on January 29th of 2022. Uh, if you want, you can go back and get the recipe for that. But first, we've got to beat our egg. Two eggs, actually. Now we take our thoroughly thawed, nice thick pork chop, and we put that in our egg wash. Now we're going to take our own paleoized version, if I can open the bag. of shake and bake, no copyright infringement intended. Shake it up nice and good. Now we gently place this in our dish baking dish. I put this in the oven at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. Let me set my timer. Now going on to the spinach. Now first we're going to turn on our oven to a moderately high heat. Not high, but like somewhere between medium and high. I'm going to have this set a nebulous area between six and seven on my stove and we are going to add two tablespoons of butter which we will swirl around there until it melts. Now that our butter is melted we're going to add, oh, careful, our 16 ounces, about a pound, of cut leaf spinach. And we're going to get around and around in the butter for about two to three minutes, or until the moisture has evaporated. Now, I haven't had, I love spinach, some of my favorite vegetables. My uh, grandma used to make that all the time. She thought it was amazing that uh, I liked vegetables so much. But I did. Okay, you can tell I should have let this defrost a little bit sooner. It's, you can tell that it's still quite a bit frozen, but that's okay. Still going to come out good. And the heat from the cooking and the butter is going to help keep that nice and tasty. Now, there is a more uh, Ex th uh, this is a shortcut method. Uh, I'm using, uh, as I said, frozen cut spinach. Uh, I was going to take a little, a little cheat, I know, but and I'm sure Julia Child is rolling in her grave. But I decided it would be easier to use this rather than go through the whole process of blanching three pounds of uh, raw spinach that I would then have to chop up myself. So this is just a shortcut 
method I'm experimenting with of a Julia Child recipe. And it's just about ready. Not quite, but almost. And, and really, um, the process they use when they freeze uh, vegetables, not just shrimp, uh, spinach, but any vegetable, is they, they, they blanch it first, which is what the process uh, first step of Julia's recipe was, was to blanch the spinach. Not blanch is in Devereaux, but uh, and then after it cools, squeezing out all the moisture and then coming to this part that I'm doing now. So it's really, I just let someone else do the blanching. Okay, now we're going to reduce the heat to medium and we're going to add, stirring in, one and a half tablespoons of flour that we sift into it. I would love it if I had someone who could film these episodes for me, but I haven't found anyone yet who's willing to work for food. Okay. Now we're going to do this for about two minutes before we move on to our next step. And I don't want to lose you, so I'm going to skip ahead. Now we turn off the heat and we add one cup of our beef stock. We stir that up. Cover it, and we're going to move it to another burner where we're going to go on okay something's wrong with that burner I'm going to have to talk to my landlord about that but not a problem we'll go back to the front one Take it down to a very low heat. And we're going to have this, bring this up to a simmer. Okay, let me try it up on number two. I would have been thrilled if I could have timed this. Key. Okay, we've got our simmer. So we go back, cover that, and we're going to let it cook at this temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. We've got 10 minutes until the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, we've got 10 minutes until the pork chop is done, which actually does work out well for our uh, spinach. And uh, we'll see you in 10 minutes. One thing I forgot to mention is that you want to stir this every so often, like every minute or so, to prevent scorching. You don't want scorched spinach. Julia Child and Popeye would not approve. And another thing I got, forgot is to uh, make sure you leave a little bit of a vent so that excess steam and moisture can escape. We don't want the spinach to be too soupy. Okay, it's now been a full 10 minutes. Mmm, that does smell so good. It's kind of a high simmer, but I'm not going to complain. Stir that up a little bit more. 
Now we're going to add another two tablespoons. Oh, that is hot. I knew it would melt the butter. I didn't think it would make the container that so hot. This is another two tablespoons. Uh, sorry about that. Safety first, everyone. Another two tablespoons of softened butter. I forgot to turn the heat off. I don't think we need to worry about it cooking anymore. Now, you have to do a little taste test. Let's see if you need to add any extra seasonings, like salt and pepper. I don't know if I'm in camera range. <clears throat> Good, but a little bland, so I'm going to take some salt, finely ground, and some finely ground pepper from our friends at McCormick. Who knows, maybe they'll want to have me do their uh, <coughs> commercials one day. Who knows? Okay, try this again. Ooh. Well, that's pretty good. Excellent, in fact. Not too salty, not too peppery. And no longer bland. So I will now be moving this over here so I can bring out the pork chop. Oh yeah, that looks like a good pork chop. So let's get everything ready. It's time to eat. Now, one thing, if your spinach does come out a bit liquidy, that's okay. You can use a slotted spoon to take uh, out the spinach, but leave the... See, it looks, it almost looks like cream spinach, except it's not using cream. It's using beef stock. But that's how you can get the uh, spinach out without bringing too much liquid. And of course, something to help sop it all up. And now my favorite part. Uh. Oh, that is just so delicious. Reminds me why I should eat more spinach. Because it tastes good. Mmm. Oh, fantastic. And now, even though it's not what the episode was about, I have some of my pork chop here. So you want just a tiniest, tiny, I don't know if you can see it, but you just want the tiniest hint of pink. Mmm. 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 Oh. oh, that is so good. I'm glad I made it to go with my spinach. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, I hope to see you next week. Oh, remember, please like, subscribe, and if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to comment down below. Until next time, I am Wesley Foreman, and always remember, eat and enjoy.